Hello, and welcome to Diary of a Mad Cal. Today, we are going to be playing Kerbal Space Program. My name is Mike, aka Hooch Cal, and let's take a rocket into orbit. Now, a lot of people are new to this game, so let's go ahead and show everybody how to do it. And for all the pro players out there who are so much better at this game than I am, feel free to laugh at how terrible I am. Now, it's going to go ahead and uh, fix this with the trisymmetry tool. I've already got a rocket built. We need to go ahead and just get this thing ready to go. Now, it's pretty good right now, but since we added those nose cones, which I like to have on my exposed bare tips of rocket parts, it's put the nose cone part as a separate stage, which is completely useless. So I'm going to show you a little bit about staging and how to fix it. The game's default staging is kind of eh, so you can click it, drag it to other stages, you can control click to select multiple parts. You can hit the plus button to open up a new stage, and you can drag entire stages by clicking on the orange bar at the top of the stage. So let's go ahead and just put this in stage 7, delete stage 5 by hitting the minus key, and uh, that's the minus key by the stages, not the minus key on your keyboard by the way. For some people I may need to be that specific, and I do apologize if that offends anyone. No, I don't. Okay. <clears throat> Rambling aside, now you can see also on staging, when you highlight over a part, you will see the highlight on the ship turn a little bit of a green hue with an outline. This will allow you to see what you are looking at, and you can adjust stages. Now, couplers, an advice I'll give you is to put your couplers with the next rocket booster you plan to fire when you drop your stage, so that there's no delay between when your rockets fire, thus allowing your rocket to have maximum thrust. Anyway, let's go ahead and launch this. And I just wait on the launch and wait on the physics engine to kick in. Sometimes it takes a minute. You'll see the ship jerk or jiggle or something a little bit, and there it is. So, looks like the physics engine has kicked in and we're ready to go. So we hit our SAS, put our throttle up to maximum, and off we go. Now, Jebediah Kerman will be our pilot today, which is wonderful, as he is the best pilot in the Kerbal Space Program, or so the community says, and he's extremely easy to keep happy. And today, he's especially happy as he's by himself and doesn't have to deal with the incessant whining of Bill and Bob. So we're going to go ahead and drop our solid boosters, and we're going to take this rocket up to about 10,000 meters. At 10,000 meters, we're going to fire our center stage, which has vectoring thrusters. This will allow us to turn the ship towards the horizon a lot easier and a lot more safely than we would without vectoring thrusters, as without them, we run the risk of spinning out of control, pointing our nose to the surface, being unable to pull out of it, and crashing in a fiery ball of death, all of which things Jebediah Kerman thoroughly enjoys. However, we don't want to kill him today. So let's go ahead and turn. We fire at the center stage, and... Ooh, I think we're... shit. Going a little too far here. Damn it, damn it. Oh, our outer stage is burned out. Let's drop that. That should give us a little less weight, and thus a little more control. I'm going to go ahead and pull out of this. Now, in Kerbal Space Program, you will make mistakes like this. You have the option of quitting and starting over, or pressing on. And, of course, since Jeb is our pilot, he demands that we press on. He doesn't take no shit from problems. <laughs> Pardon the sniffling, I have a little bit of a cold. So, let's go ahead and get this thing into orbit. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to continue to slowly tilt over a little bit at a time, not tilting currently at the moment. We're just going to go and try to get ourselves to a good apoapsis. Now, the apoapsis is the high point of your orbit if you're unfamiliar with the terminology. Right now, our apoapsis is above the planet and our periapsis is inside. However, our apoapsis is not at an orbital height. We want to reach a minimum of 75,000 meters before we can have a safe and stable orbit. However, 75,000 meters is pretty low. We want to get somewhere higher, around 150, 200 or better. So let's go ahead and continue tilting. And as you'll see, the purpose of the tilting is that it will take our orbital path and extend it eastward or north-south, whatever word you're heading. And this will allow us to achieve a orbit a lot easier. It also allows us to circularize a lot easier. It's overall just a better way to launch your ship. If you ever watch a real space flight, you'll notice that real spaceships do this too. So, we're going to go ahead 
and move up to 69,000 meters above the surface. This is when you can start to time warp. A lot of people think it's 70. No, it's 69, which is a wonderful number. Number? Wonderful number? I've forgotten how to talk. Pardon me. One take. Let's go ahead and get ourselves close to our apoapsis. Now we want to slow down a little bit before it so that we can get our ship aimed prograde, which is the circle you can see on the right side of the nav ball that's fading off the horizon. That is a circle with uh, three lines sticking out of it and an open center. That's the prograde direction, which is the direction that your ship is heading. If you want to increase your periapsis, you want the thrust to prograde. If you want to decrease, uh, or if you want to decrease an apsis of your orbit, I mean, you want to thrust prograde. If you want to increase it, you thrust... Damn it, I've got it backwards. Think, Hoochkow, think. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. have to smack myself on the head a few times for being wrong and confused. We want to thrust prograde to increase the other apsis's height, and we want to thrust retrograde to decrease it. So here we're thrusting prograde at our apoapsis. What this will do is it will hopefully put us into a near circular orbit, or circular if we're good enough. I'm not very good at this. So we're going to get an elliptical orbit out of this. Now you can see our periapsis has rised, and it's above 75,000, and that's pretty close. A little more. Right there. Okay, we're good. Now let's just go ahead and check it. This is obviously an elliptical orbit. Maybe looks circular at a glance, but the periapsis is visibly closer. And we can check it by mousing over the apoapsis and periapsis markers to see. It's like we're at uh, 246 and 200.5. So what we're going to want to do is raise our periapsis up to match the apoapsis. Now we're not going to get a perfect match, as that's not impossible. At least without some autopilot assistance. And even the MechJeb autopilot to mod doesn't ever seem to get it exactly the same. If anybody's ever seen it become exactly the same, hats off to you, you're a better pilot or you have a better autopilot than I do when I use mods. Today we're flying mod-free, as of course the community of KSP tends to think that any tutorial or video that is, unless explicitly about a mod, is invalid as a valid KSP flight with mods. And as a tutorial video, we definitely want to go unmodded as mods are for something to use once you've learned the game. Something to extend the playability and replayability of the game. So, anyway, we're going to slow down at our periapsis. And our apoapsis, sorry. And we're going to just get our ship turning in the right direction. Turning, 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 keep that ship a-turning. Pardon my bad singing. <laughs> That probably lost me a few subscribers. It was so awful. Okay. Getting closer. Let's go ahead and just get our nose pointed right in the center of that. And get ready to thrust. Okay, we got our SAS on the locus in place. We're checking it. And 246.05. And we're going to raise it. Whoops! We went a little bit too hard on that. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. Now, not a major problem. We can fix it on the next orbit. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, doing a voiceover for a pre-recorded mission, I did screw this up a little bit trying to get my orbit and, and my ship in the right part of the orbit. I'm not a very good pilot. I, I know how to do most everything in the game, just... I don't do it very well. <laughs> but I do believe I do it well enough and can explain it well enough for tutorial purposes. As that's what I intend to do, is I want to make sure that people who are fresh to this game can look to my videos and say, Wow, this guy makes everything really easy. And he makes mistakes, just like I do, so I don't feel intimidated by his skill. So, a little bit of gloating out of the way, let's go ahead and get ready to do this. So we'll go back to turning our ship. This time I promise I will not sing about turning. As I'm pretty sure your ears have suffered enough for one day as a result of my last little song. Okay, go ahead and get ourselves right in the center there. And refine this a little bit. Come on. 
There we go. There we go. Again, pardon my sniffling. Damn sinuses are a bitch to me this time of year. Any time of year, really. Always had chronic sinus problems. It's a little bit about me and stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and get our periapsis fixed. Careful. Going to do this very gently. A little bit of thrust at a time. Kill the engine. little thrust. Okay, I think we got it. Let's check it. 265.7. Yep, 265.7 and 265.3. Now, you'll notice the periapsis and apoapsis markers are jerking around a little bit. Now, this is normal. It's just the game trying to figure out which one is supposed to be where because they are so close together. When we go to warp, they will stabilize and they don't jerk so much. So, let's go ahead and enjoy our orbit. Now, provided you haven't crashed and died, blown up your ship, or any other myriad of... Myri my myriad? Fuck. Any other assortment of problems, you've also achieved a stable orbit, and congratulations. Next video, I believe I'll be showing you how to take this orbit to the Mun. For now, this is Hoochcow signing off. Enjoy Kerbal Space Program, and have a wonderful day.